Good evening. This is Cindy with Swafford Homestead. Y'all haven't seen a video from me in a while. Um, I've gotten where I couldn't do them very well. And I still am struggling with them. The minute this camera comes on, my abilities to think straight kind of goes off. Um, for those of you who have not seen previous videos or whatever, I have a condition called functional neurologic disorder. It is a, I guess for the lack of a better way of putting it, a mental health disorder. Um, pretty much my brain and does not communicate well with my nervous system. And so there's a failure to communicate. A doctor once described it as um, a software issue. If I was a computer, uh, the brain works fine. The hardware of the brain is fine. It's the communication part of it, the software, that is messed up. And in being messed up, it causes a lot of things like for me. Um, for me, I look like I have a, I have different varieties. Um, being able to think clearly and to do things right is one of them. Um, left side weakness, speech impairment, and spasms. Um, <laughs> like a, well, like that, the twitch. Um, shaking, looking like um, I'm freezing to death. <laughs> it's one of, somebody asked me one day, was I cold? And I'm like, no, I'm not cold. It's, it's the part of the, the spasms. Um, the purpose of this video is um, hopefully to help some people maybe understand what it's like um, or at least to think about what life can be like for someone like me. I was, I, I was a very independent, very I could do what I wanted to do people person. I often said I'd never met a stranger. The stranger was just a, a friend I hadn't met yet because I, I'm a talker. I love being in a group of people, meeting new people. That was um, my atmosphere. My husband was polar opposite of that. He could not stand to be in a crowd. And uh, I um, not only have FND, I am presently in what is it called perimenopause, the intro part of it. Uh, And I've noticed some personality differences in me. Um, I know that, I don't know how much of it you can attribute to FND and how much I can attribute it to the perimenopause stuff. Um, I'd probably say more of the personality changes I've had this last year. I can chalk up probably to the menopausal side of it because of uh, the, <laughs> I got tickled as I was talking to my mom one day and she said, honey, they don't call it the change of life for nothing. And I'm like, well, will I go back to my old self when I'm done? <laughs> And she kind of's like, well, she knew a lady whose whole personality changed when she went through the change. And I was like, great. So between that and the FND, um, my last year has been very challenging. That is why I, uh, I have not made very many videos. I dropped a can of barbecue sauce, if that's what you're looking at. I tried to clean it up, but I might not have got it all. 
But this whole last year has been a real struggle, a real challenge for me and Brett. Um, and I say Brett uh, because he's had to take on not just the everyday things that he does, but he's had to take on 80%, 90% of the stuff I used to do. Um, the better part of this last year, I have rarely left my couch without assistance. Um, and from the purpose of this video is, is to kind of give you an insight to what that's like. So that maybe if you know someone who has this condition, it helps you understand. Or if you see someone in public, because that I made a statement to Brett the other day that has really rocked me. I haven't left my couch very often out of fear. And now, I know, I've always said fear, false evidence appearing real. But these fears are uh, the fear of falling, because I have fallen so much. Um, the fear of what people will say, because I've gotten so, so, so tired of people asking me, well, how are you today? And have they figured out what's wrong with you yet? And my biggest one is, well, I just don't understand why they can't do something about it. To the point that I have actually stopped even bother going out. I don't even go to church anymore. And church was the one place I really loved to go. Mainly because I can't walk into the building without having an issue. Um, I was told, you know, watch for your triggers. And well, my triggers are life. This particular light that I've got on right now, just so you can see me, is one of them. I usually don't have it on other than making videos. And that's one of the reasons why I'm struggling to make this video is because it is setting off the FND. Um, I usually sit in my home during the day with the curtains only. I have a couple of lamps that I can use um, to um, light the room enough. And that's what we normally sit by. Now. So like I said, having the light just to where I can do this video is actually a, a trigger. And uh, the lights in my church are the same. Well, they're LED lightings. Um, I've tried glasses. I've tried everything to, to compensate. But that's getting off subject. <laughs> that's, that's a rabbit trail. But the point is, is, is the thing I, I stopped going... Um, because it was so hard. I would go in and I would be triggered. And it's so distracting to have someone sitting over to the side, shaking like a leaf in a windstorm, or twitching. And uh, I got really tired of being asked, why can't they do something about it? Surely there's something that could be done. The last public outing I went to was uh, the faculty and staff Christmas part breakfast at school. And I went and I did do, I was already had my left side weakness going at the time, by the time I when I went to it. When I went in, um, people offered to help me, which I don't mind. But I stayed a little too long, and I went into a complete, what I call a complete shutdown. And the spasm started, and the weakness in the right side was going, and Brett practically picked me up. He had to lift me out of the chair. And I freaked out my colleagues, people I worked with, to the point they were hollering for, do we need to call an ambulance? No, 
we're fine, we're good. Um, they kept hollering for somebody else to help Brett, and I, I finally, I just, I said, this is it. This is, this is an everyday occurrence for us. We're used to this. And it scares people. So I stopped going out. And in essence, stopped living. I just made this comment to my husband the other day. I am tired of sitting on the couch waiting to die. Because that's where I felt like I was. Because to get up and go out is a trigger. And once they start, I have little control. I have a little ability to stop it and to subside it. I try to use the techniques I've been taught in the therapy that I've been in for the last year um, to make it stop or at least to calm them. I've learned some. Don't always work. And once they get rolling, they're very hard to stop. And to fight it is a lot more painful. Um, I'm finding I have muscles in my body I did not know I had because I would be so sore. I've been physically exhausted in my life. This condition not only makes me physically, but em mentally and emotionally exhausted. And it is the most loneliest condition. I was a people person. I love to be in a group of people. And now a group of people will trigger me. And I avoid them. And I avoid them because when you get to doing stuff like this, People have a tendency to stare in the whispers. And to call the ambulance um, is hard. So I stopped living. I stopped doing anything I enjoyed. Because whenever I did go out and I'd have an issue, somebody would say, oh, do we need an ambulance? No. Because this is my life. This is who I am. And considering it has not changed, it could. It could. I mean, I, brain's a funny thing. I could wake up tomorrow and never have another issue. But I have come to the conclusion to stop asking the word why. Like I was saying, I avoid people because I'm so tired of of trying of, of being asked why can't they do something about it? Because I have lived the last year asking the same thing, actually the last six years saying the same thing. Perspective is a big thing. How you perceive things. My old water bottle here, you may not can see it, but right now the water level's here. So, is my water bottle half full or half empty? Whether you say half, if you say half full, they say you're supposed to be an insulate. If you say half empty, you're, um, what is it? Oh yeah, the side effect of the, one of the other live effects of this thing is trying to form the right words. But you know what I'm talking about. It's how you see things that makes a difference. I am married to a phenomenal man because for the last year he has had to do it all. He's had a menopausal looking woman. <laughs> the perimenopausal emotional personality changes I've gone through uh, this last year. 
It's been challenging on all of us. Not just my husband, but my children too. Uh, and I'm really trying to figure out now who I am now. Uh, because if I can accept the new me, then it will be a whole lot easier to get my life back. And I didn't say my old life, I said my life back. The life that does not exist, that exist off this couch. And I put my first steps to it today. I went outside um, and sat on my front porch without Brett being home. And that's a big thing because I haven't been going outside without Brett being home. There's a lot of things I don't do until Brett gets home. Because of it. But I guess I better wrap this video up and get this light turned back off. But I just really wanted to get on here and, and say, you see somebody doing something that looks strange. It's okay to ask if they're okay, but if they're like, yeah, I'm good, this is normal, this is normal, don't say it's not normal. Because what's normal to you may not be normal to them. Because I have decided today, well, somewhat decided today, uh, thinking and talking, which is what prompted this video, that normal is a perspective. This is the new normal, then I gotta get used to it and live with it this way and stop hiding in my house and get back out into the world. So if they say you're, this is normal, don't say no, that's not normal. Because that might just be their normal. Because I look weird or different, funny even, it's okay. Because I might may have issues but I had choice I can continue living on my couch watching life go by or I can get out and live my life and let people adjust to my new normal so I wanted to try this second to get out and let people get used to my new normal because I like watching softball games and softball seasons coming up and I don't want to live this summer on the couch like I did last summer want to live because there's a big difference in living and just being alive I'm tired of just being alive I want to start living again and instead of having FND be someone who has FND and not let FND have me thank you for for watching and have a good day.